very lucky to have um, our alumni today. One um, Siti Mira Juso. Uh, she was um, actually my ex course mate or classmate during my degree. I'm not sure if you know, but uh, we were from the second batch of UKM Pharmacy. Uh, so she's here with us today to share her experience uh, running the whole pharmacy. She's from Kuala Terengganu. So Sadish, who's from Terengganu here? So this talk is part of a series of talk by um, our alumni. Um, just to give you um, an impression of um, what is the career prospect as a pharmacy graduate. So you shouldn't limit yourself to thinking that um, once you have graduated, you know you've got to be your PRP after PRP, you've got to work in the hospital. Now the scenario has changed. Um, the, um, uh, the industry, the environment of the industry has changed dramatically. So you're gonna have to uh, open up your mind a little bit more. Okay. So without any further ado, let me welcome uh, once again. Good afternoon. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to all of you. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Zazrina, for the kind introduction. Okay. Um, I need to like. I just. Uh, for being here today to be to be with me. Thank you so much. Um, I thought there'll be some I thought there'll be some lecturers that used to you know teach me today. So uh, I so so that I can at the same time thank them as well but it's okay I think Dr. Azrina can always send my regards to them. Yeah. Alright so um any one of you here think that one day when you has when you are going to be graduated from UKM, you're going to join community pharmacy. Any hands? Because I will count how many hands before and after the session. This is how I evaluate the talk. <laughs> Whether it works or not. Anybody? Anybody interested to join community pharmacy? Yes, one, two, wow, that's great, that's great. I'm happy. So around around 10 hands I, I, I see. So now after this I'm going, going to recount again. I want to see whether, is there any increment in the numbers of hands? Okay, um, since this is more to like, um, formal thing is more of like a sharing session so I don't want to make it very formal if it's become formal every every everybody becomes stressed right so um, I don't want to be as stressful as Dr. Ezrina and Dr. Adia <laughs> so this is going to be more relaxing don't worry so um, maybe I will um, use both languages, Bahasa and English, just to, you know, to, as long as I can share things with you. Alright, um, 
I'm not going to um, go into the details on how to set up a pharmacy because um, I think uh, those things like the rules and regulations, everything, you can always Google, you know, you can check in the internet, there are everywhere people explaining and sharing. But um, basically here, um, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to um, share my own experience in, in community pharmacy for, for 14 years. Yeah, 14 years. Is it long? Is it long? Yes. So roughly you can know how old I am, right? <laughs> Okay, um, <clears throat> but before that, okay, but before that, I'm going to spend a few minutes with you to share my beautiful moments being one of uh, UKM pharmacy students back in the year 1996 to 2000. Where were you before? Where were you at that time? <laughs> you were born. <laughs> Don't tell me I am that old. <laughs> that you could actually can be my children. So all of you are in your first year. Anybody from other year? So all of, all of you are here or tuang tuang konte konte juga. They're all here. Okay. Okay. Just to remind you that um, actually when we are here, we are not just um, learn. The, uh, the formal education, okay, yeah, like you are taking pharmacy course. This is uh, what you can see is a formal education. But actually, what, what I, I saw myself, what I see when I did my, um, my, student, my pharmacy course back in the year 1996 to 2000, I was not just um, uh, educate, uh, uh, I mean, uh, learn the formal education. But at the same time, this place actually teach you to be a much stronger person, to be a better person, to, to, to get yourself prepared to the real world. You know, you, you have classes from 8 to 5? What, what, what would be your uh, normal schedule every day? daily routine. What is your daily routine? From 8 to? 8 to 12. And then uh, uh, petang punya session? 2 to 4. How about at night? You don't have classes at night. But you do have lots and lots of tutorial. You have uh, revisions that you have to get assignments. And you have, you need to do some revisions for the, you know, the subjects that you have already learned. Uh, a few days before, right? And that this is only your first year. And that trust me. So I you can trust me that things gonna get worse and worse after this. But just get yourself prepared because um, you're gonna have your uh, clinical year in what year? Third year. So you're gonna have like clinical report, and then you're gonna have thesis. In your uh, fault, is, is it because my fault I shouldn't stay be here? Ah, okay. It's just a mic. Okay. So, um, well, actually, that's why I say when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. 
you know, this is what the talk is all about. What I'm trying to tell you is that you are getting yourself prepared to be a better person, to be a stronger person, to face the real world. Because this world that you are doing now is not real yet. You know, it's going to be even more complicated when you come out from this UKM. You, you're going to find shop. You, I mean, I believe you have read somewhere in the paper, in the Google or things like, you know, we have uh, flooded with pharmacy students. So you're really going to get yourself prepared to face that as well. So maybe when um, uh, community pharmacy, is, it's a good choice. It can be a good choice to you when the government sectors has, you know, not much, lim uh, they have limited space for you guys. And then um, at the same time, in industrial, of course, like how many kilang in Malaysia to take you all? Because one kilang, they only need one license. So of course, they want to cut down their budget. You know, they don't want to pay you like, I don't know, like kilang now pay you a bit more compared to... Um, if you work in the government sector or in, in a community pharmacy, let's say if in, in the community pharmacy they pay you around 8,000 to 9,000, now Kilang maybe you, they might pay you about 10 to 12,000. But in Trungano, there is only one Kilang. In Kota Baru, I Medicare, and I, that's the only Kilang that I know. And other places, maybe more, so not many choices that you have. So, okay, so now um, I hope with simple um, sharing today that maybe it will increase your interest in community pharmacy. It's okay actually, it's not, it's not I mean to promote, you know, I have no interest at all, like I'm gonna get percentage or whatever, you know, it's just, it's just like um, to share the things that I've been through for the last 14 years. All right, so, um, is this uh, to? I would like to stress that uh, whatever the the challenge that you've been through, whatever the difficulties that you've been through, don't worry. It's just a process to mold you to become a stronger person. Okay, I think you are. Maybe you can tell yourself from the last year when you were in school, right? And now you are doing this course for how many years already? For how many months already? since you joined the pharmacy course? Almost nine years. What do you think? Nine, sorry, nine months. So what, what do you think of you? I mean, personally, are you a better person or worse? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Compared to when you were at school, like, dulu you rasa SPM dah cukup susah. Betul tak? Kan, macam nak mati kan, nak buat SPM kan? Tapi sekarang ni, you lagi mati. Tahun depan lagi mati. Kan? Tapi no, you're not going to die. Because when the going gets stuff, the tasks get going. You don't worry. Because you don't know, know your limit until you challenge yourself. So this is the time for you to challenge yourself with the help of your lecturers. These profession, professional people will guide you all the way. Okay, so um, um, enough about that. So now I'm going to touch a little bit on about community pharmacy. There's nothing much I want to share with you actually. This is like it's more of like experience of uh, of me, you know, doing this uh, community pharmacy. So um, maybe I can I can explain to you um, and show you uh, a little bit of my um, pharmacy. How do I change? Which arrow? Ah, okay. Is it okay? This is the pharmacy by Duri. Is there any one of you have been here? Orang Terengganu. Orang Terengganu tadi angkat tangan berapa orang? Takut dah nak angkat. Tadi berani angkat tadi. Orang Terengganu. Eh, nanti you all clinical ya ke buat, buat dekat pharmacy by duri tau. Ah? L.I. tu dia panggil apa? Ah, Latin industry. Kalau sombong dengan nanti, tak terima. So, you tadi angkat kan? Duduk kat mana? Duma jauh. So, siapa di Kuala Terengganu? Ah, duduk ke mana? Kupang Bujuk. Kupang Bujuk dekat tu. So, normally, um, every year, I'll be receive like um, three to four pharmacy students. So, I don't, uh, actually macam you all selalu buat bulan tujuh, bulan lapan, bulan sembilan. Actually, tu pun masih yang sama student UITM dengan student UIA buat. So, um, kadang tu, I kena pilih uh, mana dulu. Orang Terengganu kata badidang. 
you know siapa dulu uh, because I, I can only accommodate up to four students at a time so kadang tu dia ada selisih sekejap macam sampai ada enam tujuh orang sampai I tak tahu yang mana customer yang mana budak yang buat praktikal betul-betul kan so um, tapi uh, at, at a time I comfortable buat tiga hingga empat orang saja because kalau ramai sangat I tak sempat nak handle padahal bukan ajar apa pun So maybe I I can see one of you here in in your third year nanti ya eh, insyaallah. So okay um bila you buat business pharmacy and business dia dua cerita tau. Kalau katakan you buka kedai runcit you just um uh, fikir pasal untung rugi. Kan kita fikir berniaga mesti nak untung, nak cover overhead, nak cover ni, nak cover tu right? But at the same time, bila you are a pharmacist yourself, you are a professional people, you are a professional pharmacist, you dah kena balance between keuntungan dan you punya professionalism you. Right? Kalau ikutkan keuntungan saja, mesti you just fikir, we want to sell anything that can give profit to your uh, company. Kalau tak untung, you tak nak jual lah. Ataupun benda yang kurang untung, you 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 tak nak jual ni nak jual untung lebih betul tak but bila kita dalam masa yang sama you are a pharmacist yourself you want to fikir ke kebaikan patient you mungkin ubat ni you untung banyak tetapi tak bagus untuk patient so you have to you know try to balance that and try to be honest to yourself because um, this is about you know healthcare you have to be responsible it's not just about money and cents but at the same time you are responsible to your company as well kalau company tak untung, bos you tak sukalah. Kan lama-lama boleh kena buang kerja ke apa tak tahulah kan. Ha. But some sekarang ni zaman dulu, let's say back in 2000, year 2000, pharmacy was in demand. Whatever you do, orang suka you. Tak ada masalah. Tapi sekarang ni I dengar lately ada satu pharmacy outlet yang namanya tidak perlu disebut di sini. Dia dah tetapkan seorang farmasis kena buat sia 300,000 sebulan. Kalau bawah 300,000 sebulan you kena berhenti kerja. Yes. Because we have so many pharmacies available so we can just choose whoever we want. So kita dah tidak di apa um, di agung-agungkan macam dulu. Like macam oh nak kalau ada orang nak kerja farmasi oh saya nak dia, saya nak gaji dia, saya nak buka farmasi berebut-rebut. Sekarang you all dah bersepah. So please bila kita bersepah macam mana tak nak menyepahkan diri sendiri? You know, you have to do something extra. You have, you kena kata, you tengok tak Akademi Fantasia? Dia cakap apa? F-factor. Apa? F-factor. X-factor. And you need to have that X-factor. Betul. Kenapa um, nanti employer akan tanya, why should I choose you? Kenapa saya perlu pilih awak? Dan bagi awak gaji RM8,000, RM9,000 Sedangkan ramai lagi Orang lain yang boleh kerja Macam awak kerja, kenapa? Ha. So this is the time You develop the skill Nanti I tak tahu Sekarang ni mungkin uh, Silvers dah bertukar Tapi zaman I dulu ada session Counseling kan ha, Nanti um, macam one to one session Nanti lecturer akan uh, Teach you how to communicate with patients Dengan secara berkesan Because nanti, you katakan, okay, sekarang you dah kerja sebagai pharmacist in a, pharm uh, in a community pharmacy, fine. Okay, dah okay lah, dah dapat kerja. Bila dah dapat kerja tu, you kena ingat, there are many, many competitors of the pharmacy outlets around you. So, sekarang ni, tadi soalan kenapa yang employer tu nak employ you, tu satu. Katakan dia terjawab, you sangat bagus. You are the X factor, you pandai cakap, you pandai knowledge you banyak, you boleh share, fine. So now you dah bekerja. Sekarang ni you kena jawab. Kenapa customer pula pilih you? Farmasi A, farmasi B, farmasi C ada dekat area yang sama lebih kurang jarak 2-3 km kan. Kenapa patient, customer pilih nak pergi dekat you? Ah, to another X factor pula you kena create. Yes. That's why I said you have to be honest to yourself. Macam what I'm trying to tell you is that dekat farmasi bukan saja ubat There are vitamins, there are supplements Shampoo pun ada Minyak rambut pun ada Minyak rambut shampoo tu ada je dekat kedai runcit Tapi kenapa dia datang kat farmasi? Because they want the professional advice from you Kan? 
Betul tak? This is where the X factor is. So this is how you nak tarik you punya customer. Because sekarang ni ada banyak persaingan yang sihat dan persaingan tak sihat. Tak sihat ni contoh. Katakan ada satu ubat harga RM50. Kan? So you pergi ke farmasi A RM50. Farmasi B RM50. Farmasi C Oh, you dapat berapa farmasi sebelah? You pun cakap RM50. Never mind, I give you RM48. Right? Itu tak sihat. Tapi, tak sihat, tak sihat pun, you bukan control. You tak boleh nak control benda tu. It's out of your control. So, you kena terima lah. Sebab dia tak ada um, akta mengatakan, oh, kalau ubat tu harga RM50, you jual RM48, masuk jail. Kan? Kena masuk, apa benda kena bayar. Dan dia tak ada. You, kalau ubat tu harga di RM50, dia ada recommended selling price, Nak jual RM1 pun tak apa. Tak ada law mengatakan salah jual sekian-sekian. Tak ada. Tapi, macam mana nak tarik customer dengan keadaan you nak tak nak buat benda yang tak sihat. Macam contoh, okay, kalau other people is selling at 50 you want to join the market, you tak nak bergaduh dengan rakan kongsi ke you punya competitors, you nak jual RM50 juga. Tapi macam mana dengan A jual RM50, B jual RM50, tapi customer pergi dekat you. Katakan you berada di farmasi A. So how? This is the thing that you have to do extra. This is another X factor you have to add on. Which is, you build the repo with the customers. Alright? Macam mana nak build repo? Kena ada communication yang berkesan. Macam mana nak ada communication yang berkesan? You can add the knowledge. And share the knowledge. Your, your truthful knowledge. Your Orang kata you kena ikhlas dengan apa yang you buat. Yes, this is where you're going to slowly and slowly pick up your customer. Macam dekat Terengganu, memang prof, uh, apa um, kepadatan penduduk kurang and kuasa membeli tak sehebat macam negeri lain. But we still strive for the best. And kira kalau 14 tahun tu, um, I hope there will be more 14 years. No, please doakan. Okay? So, alright, it's about that. And then, um, okay, um, at the same time, bila you dah jadi a pharmacist yang professional, kita bawa tanggungjawab tu di mana-mana. What I mean to say is that doesn't mean that when you work at the government hospital, you go and see patients, you consult patients. Sebab sekarang ni, uh, yang I tahu zaman I kerja dekat government for houseman wajib tu saja in the, in, back in 2000, um, patient consultation tak berapa berlaku sangat Nak Boleh katakan almost 2%, 3, 5% macam tu saja But now memang I nampak macam dia sangat Orang kata um, proactive um, Go to patient one by one And counsel them properly And explain everything to the customer About regarding on the medications they are taking Okay, so sekarang ni itu adalah cerita kalau kerja kat farmasi at the government hospital. But it doesn't mean that when you work at the community pharmacy, you lupa kata menjawab tu. No, you know, please don't do that. Don't just think about money and sand, but think about your responsibility to the public as well. Your responsibility to educate your patient to choose the right thing, because not not the patient tahu tau apa yang terbaik, apa yang bagus. For instance, like. You dah belajar pasal steroid belum? Prednisolone? Metamethazone? Ada dengar? Apa cerita pasal steroid? Any... Anything about it? Ha? Huh? I dengar macam... <laughs> Sebab steroid is a miracle drug. Kan? Kalau um, you sakit lutut, sakit urat, bagi steroid baik. Right? You sakit kulit, ada eczema, bagi steroid baik. Kan? You ada asthma, Lelah-lelah bagi steroid baik kan? Alright. So, inilah yang benda yang saya tengah berperang sekarang ni. Because most of the GP, klinik, you know, farmasi macam baik sikit. I think kalau dalam um, the real practice, um, farmasi quite ethical compared to a physician. Ha, jangan cerita ke orang, nanti nak orang marah. <laughs> sebab, sebab mostly I am so sad. Most of my patients uh, datang dekat farmasi, uh, tujuk dekat I, um, you know, Demovit. Itu, kalau Demovit tu, Clobetasol, Clobetasol Propionate. It's a very high hierarchy dalam senarai uh, topical steroid. And then, disuruh patient taruh kat muka lagi. Memang sangat 
Orang kata like it's a miracle drug You pakai hari ni esok hilang So patient happy Tapi actually apa sirot tu buat kat badan patient uh, You google So this is how I need to re-educate the patient I check up dengan patient I'm going to give you this instead of this I tak nak bagi you steroids Tapi I akan bagi you benda lain But it takes time You need to sabar But ilah, not everybody listen Right Or Some people No, no, I nak I nak yang cepat baik I, Kalau boleh tak makan lagi dah baik You know ah, uh, Patient <laughs> macam itu kan So it's, it, it, Well, it depends You know, you can tackle lah Macam mana you nak explain dekat dia orang uh, So this is where You punya responsibility you Nak educate Dalam keadaan yang Orang tak nak dengar you, you nak ajar Macam Macam kelas petang Pukul 4 Lecturer sungguh-sungguh kat depan Sudut kat sana duk Buat dia tahu Betul tak? Ah gitu So Dan pukul berapa? Pukul 9 pagi dah tak nak dengar ah, Itu nak kena Itu nak kena Alright So um, Okay other than that Macam Besides the business uh, Dealing with the customers Dealing with our um, competitors and all uh, At the same time of course uh, Macam yang I cerita kat tadi I kata um, Kita pun kena tanggungjawab Macam I terima uh, Students yang datang untuk buat practical uh, Buat kat farmasi saya So to me um, Tak ada benda pun dapat sebenarnya Macam the most nanti Dr. Ali hantar bagi I satu CJ Tapi okey lah dapat 5 point You tahu point tu apa? Yeah, because without that point, I, be, I won't become a pharmacist anymore Is it? Ah, uh, yeah, something like that lah kan So, Terengganu is very like jauh sikit kan So, uh, there is less um, Macam talk or seminars that I will attend So, I can collect 15 points setahun Ah, uh, Tapi, so far cukup lah Cuma kalau dapat Dapat student 3-4 orang, dapat 5 points Macam ada happy, gitu kan uh, So, this is the thing <laughs> Hey, point mahal tau. Kalau boleh, nak beli. <laughs> so, um, so kalau uh, so this is the thing that we do. We um, contribute balik lah ya eh, dekat masyarakat. Uh, kita train the students, you know. Kita um, apa? Um, meng, uh, memberi balik lah apa? Um, contribution for our public. Alright. So, um, ada kat sini nak tanya apa apa tak? Okay, sekarang ni ada uh, boleh tak angkat tangan balik siapa nak jadi kom tu nak jadi farmasi dekat community pharmacy nak tengok tangan. Can I see some hands now? Kalau kalau bilangan bilangan tu kurang dari tadi anak keluar dah ni. Anak keluar. So nampaklah tambah tiga lagi kan. Eh? Tapi yang yang gitu tu kira angkat ke macam half half. So okay, I think um that's all the things that I want to share today Cumanya uh, I nak tunjuklah sikit kat you kan Apa yang buat kat farmasi Ah, tu shampoo Nampak tak shampoo So this is my farmasi lah This is Kononnya macam Nampak sangat air berlakon kan eh? Ambil gambar Macam tak serious Consult patient So this is where um, Normally kan I ada bilik tau Buat consultation patient Tapi mentang-mentang Farmasi ni bagi consultation free ya, Free consultation You duduk situ 3 jam tak nak keluar so, lah lah, so, I consult dekat luar je. So, lah, macam, okay, done, okay. Is it enough? Alright, ah, macam gitu kan? Sebab kalau duduk ambil bilik, dia dah macam very complex, dia duduk atas kerusi, dia macam tak nak keluar dari bilik tu. So, that's why I do it outside. Sebab dulu, masa belajar kat sekolah, dekat uh, farmasi course ni, lecturer cakap kena ada bilik yang yang tenang, uh, yang macam menyamankan. Tapi, I pula tak nyaman lepas tu. <laughs> So this is the, uh, the whole thing, the, the you know, ubat ubat and all. Okay. Okay. Um, ni my pharmacy juga. Cuma ni um, kita kira macam expand the kedai. Um, besides selling um, uh, vitamins and drugs, at the same time I also supply this, the hospital bed. Because my pharmacy is exactly in front of the general hospital. So, opportunity. Nanti patient nak balik rumah, nak duduk atas bed kan? Ha, so, I pun supply juga. So, all the... Um, can, what you can see the crutches here. You know the crutches? And 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 the wheelchair, nampak tak banyak? Ha, kan? The, this is the commode chair. 
Into, you know? All right. Abia. Uh, so, I think that's all. I did question and answer session. Huh? You want me to talk more or to stop now? Stop. Tapi ada tak ada idea nak cakap apa? Kalau, I think kalau Dr. Azrina dengan Dr. Alia tak ada kat sini, nanti I'm going to have more ideas. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask you guys about them. Kan? You see, you all nak share kan? Sebab selama ni tak berani nak luahkan dekat lecturer kan? I never have down moments. Ah. Ah. So far, macam, I rasa kan kalau nak, nak um, ada, sama je lah. I rasa, whatever you do in your life, lecturer ke, you know, business woman ke, buka kedai ke, kerja kat hospital ke, sama je. Maknanya, um, sampai masa you ada pressure tu, pressure juga kan. Tapi it depends on how on how you deal with it. Because life is about a choice that you have to choose what you want and you got to commit with that. You pegang ayat tu. Sekarang ni, siapa paksa you ambil farmasi? Siapa sini mak, bapak dia taruh pisau kat leher untuk dia ambil farmasi? Pertama ni. I will see your parents. Kan? So you choose kan? Ke tak? Mula-mula nak ambil medik tapi tak cukup poin ke apa benda itu duduk lepas lepas tu masuk farmasi. Ada tak? Ada, I rasa tak? Kan? So you choose to be to be to be a pharmacist. InsyaAllah in the new future yang tiga tahun lagi kan? Grab nanti kan? Make sure grab belaka. So bila you dah pilih bidang ni so you got to commit. Kan? Memang sakit. Memang sakit. You have to wake up in the middle of the night. Kan? Buat kerja. Sekarang ni you all tidur pukul berapa? 12. 12 awal lah tu. Saya dulu tidur pukul 3. Tapi dah excellent pun. <laughs> Betul you tidur pukul 12? Bangun? Bangun pukul 6. Betul? You, meaning you have a good sleep already? Betul? Orang lelaki sebab main whatsapp lambat lah. Bukan baca buku. Tengok Insta. Yang tidur buku dua tu sebab tengok Insta dengan WhatsApp. Ah, faham, faham. Tapi ialah, as I said, you choose and you commit. So, kesian dekat parents, dekat rumah mengharap you excel. Okay. Nanti, orang kampung you dah bercakap yang you all masuk farmasi. Wow. Macam best ni macam kita kan. Tiba-tiba you couldn't make it. Macam, what a waste kan. So, gunakan peluang ni betul-betul. You baru tahun satu, masa panjang lagi. So, um, perbetulkan you punya niat balik. Reset your mind. Reset everything dengan semangat baru. Kan? I think semuanya nak berjaya cuma macam tahap kerajinan tu agak berbeza. tu je lah kan? Hmm. Gangguan banyak sekarang ni kan? Dengan WhatsApp, dengan WeChat, dengan Insta. How to stop this ah? How, how do you handle with this? I rasa kalau I jadi macam you, tahun satu dah kena tendang lah. Tapi you all kira kuat juga. Macam, macam mana? How do you handle with this? How you handle with this, all the WhatsApp thing? I nak tanya you, you student, you share with me. You. I nak tanya you, kalau orang WhatsApp you, you terus jawab ke you jawab lusa? Atau minggu depan? Macam mana? How you handle with that? I off my data for a few hours. During when I study my period, I off my data. Meaning, masa you buat kerja, you concentrate. Lepas tu, another like 15 minutes, you spend untuk jawab, tengok apa ada job baru masuk ke apa gitu kan. Ah, I think that's better lah ya. Jangan macam taruh kat sebelah, ting-tong-ting-tong buka, tengok, ting-tong-ting-tong buka, tengok. Macam gitu kan, tak ada kerja kan. Yeah, I think you have to be a little bit professional. Benda ni dah macam... Um, Dia mendatangkan macam it's a technology thing, you tak boleh nak stop. Okay? So, um, just deal with it but deal with it professionally and dengan secara yang lebih bijak. Betul tak? Alright. Tak ada benda nak cakap ni? Oh, ok.
okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, during my, my first few years, when I started the pharmacy, um, I just do retail, meaning uh, kita harapkan customers yang walk in, yang masuk, beli barang, and hal-hal bye-bye, gitu kan? Okay, and lepas tiga tahun, kita become a little bit more confident. Um, we have to reapply the license, kita ambil wholesale license, they call it. So, with this wholesale license, you uh, boleh supply barang-barang dekat mana-mana hospital, any, uh, any places like Jabatan Kerajaan, uh, Government Hospital, Universities, dekat Terengganu tak banyak universiti ada UNIZA. UNIZA, UNIZA ada pharmacy course tak? Dia ada medical, medical kan? Medical course, ah yes. Ada UNIZA, dia ada UITM Dungun. And ada juga UITM Cendering yang kecil je, dia punya tempat dia. And dia ada UMT. So, and dia ada macam a few others. I'm not really sure about the name, tapi dia tak banyak. So, I I banyak deal with them. I supply, um, kebanyakan dia orang ni universiti, dia ada jabatan kesihatan dia orang sendiri. So, I I supply uh, the medical, uh, uh, the medical staff, the drugs, the uh, vitamins, everything for the students and for the staff at the university. So hospital, uh, I buat juga, tapi I kurang because due to the economical status yang tak berapa bagus, so um, dia dah kurangkan pembelian dengan farmasi lah. Dia banyak ambil direct yang they could get a cheaper price. So these are the things that we do besides uh, the retail pharmacy. Actually, benda ni uh, banyak yang peluang kalau kita semangat lah macam tadi. Kedai daripada satu jadi dua. So um, bila bila you jual satu produk, actually kalau ikut kan um, jual hospital bed, jual crutches, you jual benda-benda macam kita tak perlu kan farmasi punya license, tak perlu. You tak ada license farmasi pun tak apa. Tapi bila you jual benda tu, benda-benda yang all the medical equipments, all the crutches, the wheelchairs, dekat farmasi orang akan pandang benda tu berbeza. Orang lagi confident, kan? Ah, so that's why I took the opportunity when there's next shop was left uh, empty. So we threw some bit kedai tu and buat make it one entity. Because dalam perniagaan dia ada juga tau. Kalau you tahu nanti esok, so, <coughs> kalau berdekatan macam gitu dikira satu entity. Kalau nanti berpecah satu sini satu depan sana two entity. So nanti banyak benda you kena bayar kat government. So Kedai dia tak kira besar mana, dia kira satu pintu masuk, satu entiti. Ha, so kalau kedai you besar, 18 tingkat, satu entiti juga. Kalau you farmasi, you ada 20 tingkat, satu farmasi cukup. Tapi kalau kedai you kecil, farmasi you besar ni pun, dia nak satu farmasi juga. So you maknanya, it's how you, you know, you try to reduce you punya cost kan. Sebab satu farmasi, you kena bayar quite expensive nowadays, right? Ya. Yeah. Farmasi, orang bayar gaji mahal. Sekarang ni, tetapi... As I said yang tadi, I ulang balik, you all dah ramai sangat. So, um, you have to be menonjol lah. Macam mana nak tonjolkan tadi yang I kata, ya, yeah, they expect the thing. Double the skill. Alright. Uh, I don't really like, I, 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 I don't really remember those bad memories because I dah train myself ingat benda yang baik-baik saja. But no. <laughs> Tapi I, I to me macam tak ada apa lah. It's not that challenging sangat. Mungkin orang Terengganu baik-baik. <laughs> so I think um dah dah setengah jam ah. Tak boleh cakap lama-lama nanti you bosan eh. Nanti kat belakang-belakang tu dah tengok-tengok benda baca-baca buku dah. Eh so nak pergi eh. Tapi style memang macam tu lah kan uh, Masa orang cakap ke depan ni juga nak tengok buku kan uh, Okay, faham So alright, so I think that's all for now And thank you so much for sharing with me here To be part of my day Thank you so much uh, We will still open for a Q&A session Do you have any question to ask? Eh, masa interview dulu bukan main kan tanya soalan dia orang tak memang ada dia orang jenis cakap kat belakang nanti don't worry. Oh kita kena keluar ke? Ah yes. Is it because we're here you're not comfortable to ask questions? Actually, Puan Siti is um um 
on sort of like a short transit before she flies off to China tonight. No, I mean tomorrow, early morning tomorrow. So that's when we thought like, okay, we'll take this opportunity, grab her and drag her here and let, you, let her talk to you know, our students so that she can share some experience with you. Um, yes, I can see her hand at the back. Okay, nak kerja kat luar negara. Boleh jawab ke Puan Siti? Macam mana maksud you, you uh, you graduated from UKM? You nak kerja luar negara tu luar mana? Luar Medan? Okay, you got to be specific which luar negara you are referring to. Contoh. Thailand. Different negara, different rules and regulation. Singapore, okay. Singapore establish tak kita punya qualification. You mean nak kerja sebagai farmasis ke pelayan hotel? Farmasis with your license from UKM. Uh, ni aku dah tanya your lecturer. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, sekejap, saya pernah ada attend satu meeting before Tapi dia tak boleh confirm untuk farmasi Dia hanya boleh confirm untuk uh, medic, nurse Dengan ada course dari FSK, I can't remember which one Dia memang, um, apa, automatically they recognize from UKM only Maksudnya kalau you grad UKM, you terus boleh kerja kat Singapore Memang ada Tapi, tapi, ah, farmasi, ah, apa, farmasi tak sure. Tapi I know that ada a few seniors yang dia ada master in clinical pharmacy lah, so they work there. Tapi not ah, degree B farm honours tu, ah, fresh grad tu tak ada. Tapi master clinical yes, I know they work. Ada a few yang work in ah, Singapore hospital. But um, you guys bonded ke macam mana? <laughs> Apa JPA scholarship ke PTPTN? <laughs> well, uh, we've had our graduates um, who happen to be uh, one of our classmates as well. She now works in Canada as a pharmacist, uh, but she had to go through um, a lot of, um, you know, exam examinations um, to get registered and to practice um, over there. I remember at that time I was the coordinator for undergraduate program. I had to send the whole curriculum, translate it into English, so that she can use that um, to prove to the authority over there that um, the training that she received in UKM um, is um, uh, acceptable. Yeah, for um, the requirement in Canada. So uh, after much travel that she has to go through, she is now registered and practicing there. So it depends on the regulations and the requirement. Yeah. But you don't simply graduate from UKM, do your PRP here, and then you are free to work elsewhere in the world. Uh, so if we were to go out the country, can we come back to the faculty and ask for a translated version of the coordinated? Oh yes, you can. Yeah. No, I did it for free last time and I didn't sleep just to translate the whole curriculum because they want the core synopsis but that's in Canada, I don't know you know, there could be a, a different requirement from other countries Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully this is uh, the direction that we're going um, at some point in the future maybe um, we will do something among the Asian countries to allow mobility of um, pharmacies around the region. Yeah. Actually, this one they talk gazette lagi during during that meeting. Uh, they were saying it's just a discussion. Tapi jangan jangan quote kata this one is uh, already how do I say? Memang dah confirm ah. They were just saying because the reason why when you came in here. Uh, you sebenarnya uh, half of your yuran tu sebenarnya government sponsored because dia sangat murah so meaning you are actually um, subsidized lah we say is subsidized 
So they were saying kalau this company macam Singapore whatever if they want to take you and work there they have to buy a certain amount so that the government will not lose money like that. So this is actually what's happening. When they go out like so much money has been spent and then they lose it macam tu saja. And in fact like you know uh, these people are supposed to actually work in Malaysia to contribute back because kalau private is different story lah because private memang they pay by themselves they can go, just go anywhere. But this one is for the subsidized but it's still uh, in discussion uh, tak tahu lagi macam mana so uh, but definitely PRP you have to do it here lah PRP you have no options okay so you have to get it get the license from here only then I think if I'm not mistaken after I tak sure sebab just lately the issue of lambakan ni berlaku so I don't want to say anything yang tak confirm lagi lah so we'll just wait, whatever that we get information, definitely we will keep you updated. Okay, but just to let you know, that's the one of the concern that they actually discuss lah because, you know, the, the fees is a subsidized fees. So they think that it's a bit unfair if, you know, the company or whatever have to pay a certain amount so that, uh, apa? otherwise, they should give the post to somebody else lah. I mean, that's the issue that they have actually discussed with regards to that. But it's not your fault anyway, okay? Uh, so, kalau uh, kita ada juga, kita punya... Uh, kalau you tengok dekat alumni, apa? If you walk through the... After you went out from the lift at Block B, you ada perasan tak ada alumni kita letak gambar? Okay, so one of our alumni pun memang ada work uh, overseas lah juga, okay? In Switzerland. Um, they depends on countries, okay, and depends on what type of work that you are doing. Like the one that Dr. Azuna mentioned, because she's practicing, so she needs to get the license, definitely. So, if you like become manager or something that you don't actually deal directly with the patient, you don't need to use your, your license, that's a different story. So, it all depends on your job scope, what sort of jobs that you actually, um, apa yang you minta lah. Uh, so, it all depends on that. So if you want to become pharmacist registered, you have to follow uh, according to the country punya regulations. Okay, so I know Australia also they allow that, but you need to sit for exam. You have to pay certain amount. You have to sit for exam. When when you pass, only then you can actually uh, practice. So quite expensive, if I'm not mistaken, about between five hundred to one thousand Aussie dollar. You have to pay, and it does not give you the you know, you you boleh dapat tak semestinya. Kalau you fail, you have to repeat and you have to pay again. So ah, uh, those kind of things. Yeah. So it depends. Okay. So I think apa lagi? Ya? I just like to reinforce what Dr. Adria has um, explained to you just now. Um, the alumni, um, one of our alumni who is working in Switzerland, um, he actually manages the clinical team, clinical research team. Mm -hmm. um, so by post, he doesn't have to be a pharmacist. Mm. But it's an advantage uh, to him because he is, I mean, an advantage to the company. Mm -hmm. He works with uh, Novartis. Uh, Novartis, uh, Novo Nordis. Yeah? Um, so it is an advantage because he comes from a uh, pharmacy background. So he really knows what he's doing. Um, so yeah, uh, that one, you, you don't have to get your re uh, yourself registered. Pun. You can work um, as a manager yeah so it all depends so the thing is now um, regardless of, of what is happening out there you have to be prepared so these four years is like an incubation time for you um, so once you go out there you have to go with an open mind and um, maybe you can set your direction from now you all bukan yang macam zaman budak-budak uh, sekolah dah jadi satu dah jadi dua cikgu tanya what is your ambition what is your ambition you know you are going to graduate as a pharmacist Okay, so you should know um, your direction um, as a pharmacist from now. Okay. Um, right. Anything else? Kalau dah tak ada apa-apa, I think I'll just wrap up the session. Um, so um, since um, Pansisti is going to travel tomorrow, so <laughs> I just like to request again for her um, when the going gets tough. The tough goes to shopping, so that's what she's gonna do tomorrow. Okay, so uh, let's um, put our hands together for Point City. Thank you very much.
of the togetherness as alumni. Eh? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. No exam. No exam. No exam. So now you have to think. Terus takut akan terbetul. Okay. It's okay. You're free to go.